I can't even tell what you're doing. This is a terrible video for YouTube. Hey everybody, look at my dark robot. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Logic Bots and uh, we're continuing on here with the career and getting further and further and into more and more complicated Logic Bots and I'm super excited about that. We beat the color navigation last time, that was a little bit difficult one there, uh, didn't get very many achievements there, but we're going to move on right now to the solar search and this one is, is kind of cool, I really like it because this is, most of the challenges they're all pretty much the same, they're like, you know, follow this line or follow this path or follow this maze or whatever and make your way out, but this one is uh, sort of like the light challenge from a couple of episodes ago where we have to make a robot that can follow the light but this time we have to make a robot that can stay alive for 180 seconds by moving into the light areas your logic bot will lose battery charge when not in the direct light and have it last for five minutes or longer with 600 or less and survive the first three minutes without its power dropping below 30 percent so this is kind of like a survival challenge it's the first one i've seen like that so that's kind of cool and uh we're only given one body here, the Solar 5 body, so this body has a battery power and eventually it'll drain, so we have to make a robot based on that that will be able to navigate. And I think the easy way to do it is, uh, well we only get light sensors, but really what we need to do is we need to use multiple light sensors to sort of figure out what direction to go in to get to the light. And I think all we have to do is have a light sensor on either side and say if the one sensor is greater than the other we turn in that direction like i think like, i'm pretty sure that's all we're gonna need all right so first things first we're gonna put some snap lines on this so we're just gonna put uh, you know one nice and low here like so and then uh, one here i think we're gonna use just front wheel drive front wheel steering and like a rear caster wheel doesn't really need to be centered it doesn't matter too much so that'll that'll drag it along basically with the two front wheels and then I think all we need really is just two light sensors. Um, one that kind of points out this way on an angle and one that kind of points out that way on an angle. And so if they're, it'll constantly move forward and if the one is greater than the other, it'll turn in that particular direction. I think that's really all, all we need to do. Let's just put down a little bit of a structural beam. I'm not too concerned if we get budge or not. Um, obviously it'd be nice, but I'm not really. Okay, so there's a, there's a little beam there, perfect. Okay, so now can we do something with this sensor. I mean, we can put it 90 degrees, it's so useless. Nice little like mounting cube there, just like that, perfect. And we'll just put another perfectly little tiny box section on the other angle here, like so. Perfect, all right, that'll do. And then just light sensor mounted to, yeah, I don't even care if you're 45 degrees. Let's put you at zero though, just like that. Okay, so that'll be the right light. All right, so that'll be the left light. Okay, so the circuit board, I figure, is going to be pretty easy. We're going to have the right light and then the left light. Uh, we're just going to move you again here, there. And then we're going to have to have both of these always on. So we'll just uh, get our yellow wires here because I like how visual the yellow is. Okay, so this will be the right motor on like so. And this will be the left motor on like so. And then we're going to do a splitter on each of these. And the splitter is just because we're going to do two conditions. You could probably do it with one condition, but I'm just going to do it with two. So less than and uh, less than here. So if this one is less than this one, right? Or on the other side, if this one is less than this one. Okay, so if the left light senses more than the right light, then you want to go to the left, which means you got to reverse the left motor. And this one should reverse the right motor. So now it should always drive straight, but then if it senses that one side's greater than the other, it's going to drive in that particular direction. I, I, like, I think this will work. What's it doing? Where's it going? I don't even, is it? Oh, we need, you know, we need some debugging tools. Okay, so let's see what it's doing. Yeah, so the numbers are just like, they're too, they're too, but they're both going down, you see. So we're driving clearly in the wrong direction. First things first, let's uh, let's make these signals a little bit more consistent. So let's make them round to the nearest whole number. Because we don't really need, I don't think, all that crazy accuracy. So this is a this is a clamp which is just rounds it to the nearest whole number. And then these will now go to the splitters. Like so. And then we'll do the two less than conditions. 
So I, I still think this is not going to work because if we're aimed in the wrong direction, it's not going to do anything. But if the right sensor is bigger than the left, then that means you have to go to the right because the light is on the right side. So you need to reverse the right motor. And the left, then you reverse the left motor. So I, I think we're going to drive away from the light, but I'm not positive. Oh, are we going towards it? Oh, it looks like we're actually, we're kind of jerking our way towards it. This is good. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Come on. Get to get towards that light. It's really, like, wobbly. You can see there, it just kind of jerks its way along. Come on, get in the light. Oh, my God, the light moves. Are you serious? Oh, buddy, you're too slow for this. Way too slow for this. I can't even tell what you're doing. This is a terrible video for YouTube. Hey, everybody, look at my dark robot. You can't see what it's doing because it's like pitch black. Well, there we go. You can kind of see better from this angle. Come on, get in there, buddy. Charge up, charge up. Keep going towards the light. Don't turn too much now. See, now they're both at a thousand, so it just kind of sits there. It's good though. You can you can stay in the light there as long as you want. I think we're actually going to beat the a minute one 180 seconds. That's three minutes. Um, Let's just fast forward here. You know, is this light, does it not move? Oh, no, now it did. Okay. See, it's super jerky, but it, it actually kind of works. Oh, no, totally missed there. And now it's got two zeros. And the light's, the light's way there. Okay, so, out of power. It needs something to detect if there's light behind it. That's, I think, the problem. So we're going to put a light sensor behind, and we're going to call this the rear. And we basically need a, a third condition that says, let's first of all, let's delete this whole chunk of things because we don't really need that. The rear is basically going to say if the rear is greater than either two, then uh, reverse the one wheel direction so the whole thing just spins. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put our two greater than conditions up here. That still has to stay the same. We still need two greater than conditions. But we're also going to do an addition system as well to a constant number. And this will give us the ability to put a tolerance on things. So this one will go to the top like so, and this one will just go to the bottom like so. I'm gonna go plus or minus two to start, and if that's too much, then we'll change it. But we're gonna go plus or minus two, okay? So the pass through on the right definitely is gonna have to go to a splitter, and the pass through on the left is definitely gonna have to go to a splitter. If the right plus two is less than the left, and if the left plus two is less than the right. Then the other side is gonna go here, like so. And this side's gonna go to there, like so. So if the right side plus two is less than the left, and that means you are way over to the left, so you've gotta go to the left. And you gotta go to the right. So that should be a little bit more aggressive now. I'm gonna see if we don't even need the rear sensor here for now. I'm just going to leave this disconnect and see if it works better with the tolerance. I think we're still going to need this to flip it around, but let, let's try this. I can't even see anything. Alright, it's going smoothly towards the light. You can see there, because it's got that plus or minus two tolerance, uh, it doesn't jerk back as forth as much because it's not correcting every little tiny movement. It's only correcting major changes in light, so that's kind of good. Um, we might get screwed, though, if we're aimed out into the distance, but let's just speed it up here because we got a lot of time to cover, so... All right, yeah, see now it's, see they're both zero, so it, it needs that, was the rear one zero there too? Well, okay, so if the right is greater than the left, let's go plus or minus one, first of all, let's increase the tolerance a little bit, or decrease the tolerance a little bit. Okay, and uh, if the right is greater than the left, then it turns to the right. So all that we need, really need to check is if the rear is greater than the left it also needs to turn to the right so we're going to put another single splitter here on the left we're going to go this one goes to here this one will go we'll just run this along here up to there and this one will go here so if the rear is greater than the left then we also need to reverse the right motor so this is going to go to an or statement now an or gate so now, if it gets stuck in a spot where there's only light behind it, it should work a lot better with the tolerance. I think this is good. I have, I'm like way over budget, but that's okay. All right, where are you going? You're not, 
Okay, you're going way over there. Okay, good, you turned around. See that rear, you definitely need that rear system hooked up. And the reason you only need it hooked into the left side is because it's gonna turn to the right. If you wanted to put it, you could put it into the left motor and then uh, use the right sensor as the trigger. But you don't need it to check against both because if the light's behind it, then it's obvious that this one's gonna be much brighter than the other two. All right, that one tolerance, uh, I don't know if it works out or not. Let's, you know what, this is good. Just sit in the light there, that's cool, buddy. It's probably gonna shut off right when that one's behind it. What you doing? I'm gonna speed up. Okay, so that's good. So there's a light right there. This is awesome. It's a little light finding robot. So I mean, it's kind of cool. It just it never shuts off, and the only thing was the rear light. You can see there. I mean, it's, it's so hard to tell because of the stupid brightness. I want that achievement, the uh, the one there where it's like survival and you have to not get below 30% battery charge. I don't think we've done it yet in this run. Come on, keep going. 70%. Okay, that was close. 30%. Oh, no, it was good. It caught it. All right, get some charge here, man. Get some charge. Don't die, Light. Don't die. All right, it's good. It's good. I think we just got the, the level. That's three minutes. That's the level, 180 seconds. So we need to go for five minutes total to get the full-on achievement. And I think we might have gotten the 30... Percent achievement. We, the only th achievement I don't think we got here is the budget one, but you know what? We we got the other ones, and it was definitely because of that tolerance with the the way that the physics work in this game. The wheels are kind of jerky sometimes, and so if you have that nice tolerance between them on the sensors there, it won't correct as much for all the little jerks in the uh, in the logic bot. So that's kind of awesome. So all it's really doing is just comparing the light values against each other and turning in the direction that has the highest value. And if the rear has the highest value, then it just keeps turning in the one direction until the rear comes all the way back around and has the lower value. So it's really just quite a simple system. There's five minutes. How long is this thing actually going to go for? All right, let's just let's just leave it and see. I mean, I feel like the oh, it just the level. It's going backwards. What a champ! It just drove backwards. Oh, there it goes. Awesome. Five minutes, fifty-six seconds. Ten parts used. Fourteen gates. Eight fifteen. The one thing I love about Logic is just how you can take some simple gates and some really simple sort of, I guess, principles, and you can make a robot that, you know, would function in a very realistic environment. And you could build something very similar to this that compares the light value of two sensors. I mean, they'd have to be some pretty sensitive sensors to get values in this kind of ranges, but you could do something like this and then compare them with the tolerance. And, you know, that's the one reason why I really like this game is just how many uh, cool things you get to look at and, uh, and really experience in robotics. But if you guys like that kind of thing, make sure you hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, uh, I'll see y'all next time.